What's up and good afternoon guys. Welcome back to another video. This is part four of the Rhino Ranch Versatube carport project. <laughs> In the last video we got all of the roof and wall sections built. Now today we get to haul them up and set them onto the foundation that we poured the other day. Now we're hoping with four of us we can carry these things. They're heavy, but I don't think they're too heavy. But if they do end up being too heavy, we'll have to rig them up to the mini excavator and just kind of crane them over. Pretty good distance we have to travel. This is the flat and really only concrete spot we had to assemble these things. And it's you know nicer to do it on this than it would be to try and do it on some uneven dirt. So we've got our five pieces. These are five walls and roof pieces. Three of them have these truss braces that go across the center. And kind of the way these work is the inside one and the outside one, which are these two that don't have the truss braces. And then the three with the truss braces go in the center. Now, yesterday we put these roof purlins on and these are what take the crossbars that like link all of these together. They sit in these little cradles. Well, we marked all of them ahead of time, but we didn't want to have to move these things multiple times. So what we're going to do is we're going to take one, set it up over there, and then we'll screw the purlins on. Then we'll take the next one, go over there, screw the purlins on. Sorry, not the purlins, the purlin brackets. Uh, I think it's just going to end up being easier that way than trying to do it all right here. I mean, I guess we probably could have just slid it down now that I'm looking at it. Slide this one down. That would expose that one and then yada yada all the way down. Sometimes my brain doesn't always work. So we'll try a little, uh, you know, harder, not smarter today. We've got our bottom plates sitting on our stem walls and basically we're going to measure, make sure they're in the exact spots that they need to be. They're not currently screwed together. We should probably do that as well. We'll make sure they're the exact lengths. And then we need to make sure everything squares up. It should because we squared up our stem walls, but just to double check because we do have six inch stem walls, which give us a little bit of play. Uh, we have a little bit of room if this thing needs to change. We need to make sure at this stage that it is square. That way when it comes time to put the roof on, the roof's not kind of weird and cockeyed and out of square because that's really going to end up fighting us. Now, this concrete is pretty fresh. We are going to be anchoring it about, what is that, an inch and a half maybe from the edge. So what we're going to do now is we're going to drill it today. It uses wedge anchors. If you guys are familiar with like redheads, we call them redheads. It's just the name brand. It uses wedge anchors, but we're going to just set them in. Got everything string lined so we know these are nice and straight. I don't really know where these screws are supposed to go, but we're going to go in the top. Let's just do that. Oh, well, oh, oh, everything moved. Everything moved. there that's about it all right so now we've pulled our measurements to make sure we are 24 feet because that's what we made those trusses to so hopefully we are well within spec now these are the wedge anchors that we're going to be using basically the way these work is you drill a half inch hole put these down into the concrete and when you tighten them the sleeve basically gets pulled over this flared piece and that locks it in and binds itself down in the concrete but again we don't really want to tighten it and have that happen and risk blowing out a little corner of the concrete because we are so close to the edge so for now we're just going to set these in maybe just lightly tighten them and that should hold it in place while we're setting everything up and then again in a week we'll come back and actually crank down on these things all righty so we're using the construction master pro app we're going to go 18 feet that is our length then 23 feet 6 inches is our width because we are only going to be able to get the tape measure to here when we're measuring our diagonals we're not going to be able to measure to the outside edge so we, these are three inches wide we took out three inches on each side that gives us the 23 foot six inches we then hit width again with one more time that tells us our square up so we need to be 29 feet 7 and 3 16 measured from diagonal to diagonal and if we have that on both sides we know we are square i'm gonna burn a foot because i have this stupid hook so you're 37 and a quarter shy 30 foot seven and a quarter shy or 30 foot seven and a quarter on this one right on. all right check the other side same thing burning a foot 30 foot seven and a quarter that's what we want we want a little shy it's supposed to be 316 so good now when you guys hear us say we're burning a foot if you're trying to hold this on the end first of all you don't know exactly if that's correct and accurate so we burn a foot we go to the one foot mark and then we hold it there because that's easier to hold than trying to hold this hook and hoping that's actually at the zero mark 
So that just adds up one foot to the measurement, but that's how we get a little bit more accurate of a measurement. So we are all squared up. Now we are going to drill some holes using the Milwaukee cordless roto hammer. I freaking love this thing. Okay, both the bottom plates are on. Now we're gonna find out just how uh, heavy these things are. We haven't even tried to pick them up yet, so we might find out real quick this ain't happening, but I think we got this. I've watched enough videos of these things getting put up. It's usually just a couple of guys grabbing the trusses and put them in place. Let's just get it up and then see where we're comfortable. Yeah, that's not bad at all. Well, not a, huh? oh. Okay, go away with you first. No problem, Evo. No bueno, puppy. This is gonna be the back. I want all the bolts in the back. Put puppy outside. Do a fuera puppy. Hey boy, you might have to go outside too. No, he's, he can be inside. Stand it up now. Oh, we gotta get it on the thing. Yeah, we ain't picking it up. Like hell, you ain't don't weigh that much. I bet we can pick this thing up. Yeah, we got this. All right, we're going for it. Hold on, we're fighting this one. This is the one. Oh, there we go, we're on, we're on. Good. That's it. Well, let's stay there. Let it go, puppy. Man, we got a ladder that big? Nope. Yeah, maybe. Looks nice and tall now. Hell yeah. Super tall. Shit. Daddy was here. We'd have a two story room up there. He'd be living here. Yeah. Get in tu casa? Si. Sí. Buena esa? Si sí, para los carros. All right, now we're putting on the purlin brackets on the next one. Again, we already did our layout so we know where they go. It should ensure that everything lines up once we go to do the roofing. Huh? The front and back don't get them. I mean, we can always, if we decide to yeah, do some you... later, you can buy the shit and screw it on from them. This shit? Yeah. It's a little heavier. Everything to the back. I want all the bolts to the back. I don't want to see them. Ready, puppy? You want Shivo? Portal! Side of the wall. Good. We can stand it up right here and walk it over. We're right here. Ain't going nowhere. It worked last time just fine. Oops. We're going to go up onto the bottom plate first, and then we'll pick it up into place. Ready? One, two, three. Okay. One, two, three. Oh, we're sitting on it. It's just we got to finagle it to drop. Okay, we're on. Good. Yep. Hip. Let's see. That's pretty sturdy. Oh, this one's more sturdy 
when you are. Ready? Go. One, two, three, go. We're on. Oh. We're not. We're holding ours up, so go ahead. Oh. We are, uh, we're almost off. Look, look at Abel. Maybe Poppy needs the protein, huh? Si. Un saco. Más potencia, Poppy. Boy, let's go for this. Gonna go all the way? Let's try it. Ready? You watch your ass, okay? Okay. One, two, three. Oh, oh, oh. He let go, so wait, let us get up. Okay, you watch your ass, huh? Me, me, arriba. You on? Yeah, we got a twist. There we go, we're in. Go down. Sit. They're ready. We just started the video. Oh. Start the intro. Is that Spanish? Yeah. Oh, okay. All righty, y'all. She is up. This is what she looks like kind of from the house looking out. It's looking pretty good. Looking pretty good. Obviously, it's going to look even better once we get that nice, beautiful gray roof on it. I'm pretty excited to see that, but she's pretty big. She's tall. Obviously, we're up on stem walls right now that are, you know, one side's almost 18 inches of stem wall, which is pretty significant. By putting these stem walls, we can basically make any height carport that we want. So if you guys are, you know, don't want to spend the money to get a taller one, I actually don't know what's cheaper at this point. <laughs> Pouring concrete or buying the taller building, but you can make a building taller. Ten foot? Yep. Ten foot two. So this is a nine foot building, and the measurement they give you to is to the bottom of that truss brace going across. Because obviously, if you're going to pull in, you got to be able to clear that. So nine foot is what the height of the building is, and that's your clearance height. So we are at 10 two, which means really we can bring it up 14 inches if we wanted to and still get our nine feet. We don't necessarily have to. We're going to leave a six inch stem wall so chava right there is holding about where dirt would be there's about six inches nine, nine five nine six all right nine foot six all righty y'all the next step is we're gonna have chris my rain gutter guy come out because he also does sheet metal work and he does metal roofs he is going to assist me slash probably actually do most of the roofing there something i've never done i don't want to screw it up i want it to look right i don't want to jack up the panel scratch them up or anything like that so i'd rather have a pro come out here and help me so it's gonna sit like this for a couple of days we'll continue this video when chris gets here man i hate to admit it y'all but i think we're starting to get a little bit away from summer look at this we got this overcasty foggy mornings i gotta put on a hoodie but i think we got chris pulling up right now i'm gonna go pull the tractor out and uh let's get to work doing some roofing I haven't even looked at these things yet. Now, this morning we still need to install the roof purlins before we can actually get the uh, roof panels on. And this is kind of a very crucial part because this is when we lock all of those wall panels in plumb. So we gotta actually kind of take our time here and do it right. So I'm gonna pick up the pallet with the purlins on it. We'll take it over there and we'll start to do some figuring because this also determines our gable overhang. So on these roof purlins, again, you can see you got a bunch of different variations here depending on your roof coverage. Now remember, this was a 22 by 24, which we thought meant 22 interior wall building size. But these walls actually are only 18 foot. So then you're like, okay, well that means two foot overhang front and back, that gives us our 22 foot length. Well you come here and you see that if you're a 22 foot building, you are now 21 foot two inches with a 19 inch overhang. But this is pretty much gonna be the process for today. We'll get these purlins put up plumb up these walls, screw them in, get everything nice and tight, and then they're gonna go through and they're gonna slap all these roof panels on with our sweet three and seven sixteenths inch overhang, allegedly. Uh, they're fighting you? Yeah. This one's good. Hold on. All right. All right, you're good. Right, we're tight to here, so it keeps them. Right, hold on. Hold on, we gotta get our overall too. Make sure we're. Yeah, I need to go an eighth. Out. Out? Yeah. My way like an eighth. We might have to shrink because you're past over here. 
We need to be 21 foot two, but I don't think we can get any tighter. No, we're 21 foot two. So that's it. So we'll have to figure out because see how we're past the wall. When we go up and we plumb shit up, we might just have to cheat it and something, something weird's happening. It's going, yeah. You got like an inch and a half still. There you go. Let's see what our overall. 21 All right. screws down right is what we're doing yeah. I gotta go to your left yeah. yeah take it to him and then we'll screw it on the lines and then we will plumb up after that. Yeah, so Chris, so you're gonna take it to your 19? You should have their line on there. Yeah, move the pole and then we'll screw it to it and then we'll plumb everything up and then we'll lock these center ones in. Well, pretty fucking good. The prep work right there. <laughs> now, now it's easy once we're out of the ground, everything's oh, just shit. hitting. Yeah. I'm just gonna... yeah, this one looks like it's got to shift over a little bit. You want my? I got a magnetic one. You want it? Oh, you do? Yeah, please. Yeah, I'll go grab it after this. Cool. So the ladders weren't quite cutting it for Chris to reach all the way up. So we've now got the coyote with the pallet on the end. We got both guys up there getting her screwed in. Once we get this center section locked in, then we'll be fully locked in. Everything's plumb, everything's great. And now we can just slam in the rest of the purlins and then move on to the roofing. Now with both sides plumb, we're trying to kind of plumb up the center, but the entire thing just still moves and racks and does all kinds of weird things until I'm assuming we get the actual roof panels locking this together with some like sheer ability that keep it from wanting to kind of parallelogram on itself. Kind of hard to really plumb up this center section right like the whole thing just moves like crazy so what i think we're gonna do is we're gonna just try our best to plumb up off of these posts right here and then where the other ones lie that's just where they lie we can't fight every single one going this way all of the purlins there's five per side and then when we get to the front then we're just gonna make sure that this front piece is as plumb as can be because that's really the most important piece that's what you're gonna see and the reason it's so important that things are kind of where they're supposed to be is when you go to put this roof on if things are out of square like some weird stuff's gonna start to happen Now I did relook at my order when I bought this thing because something was just seeming a little bit off because the plan said that your building will be two inches bigger or your roof line will be two inches bigger than the actual dimensions that you ordered. But ours was coming in at 21 foot two inches and I'm like, man, something's off. Like, am I getting the size wrong in my head? So sure enough, I was. Apparently this is a 21 by 24 and I've been saying 22 by 24 this whole time. So that was, that was my little mix up there. Hopefully that extra foot's not detrimental to covering the tractor completely. All the purlins are up. Everything is looking good. Now comes the uh, reason I brought these guys over here is their metal roofing expertise because this is completely foreign to me. Um, so it's saying off of that last purlin, which is right there on that edge, we want to stick out three and seven sixteenths. So three and a half shy. Why we couldn't just go three and a half, I, whatever, is what it is. So we can either mark them down here or just hold the tape up there. These guys kind of want to just hold the tape up there. And again, I'm going to let them totally run this show because I got no clue what I'm doing when it comes to metal roofing. 21 overall. What are these? Three foot? So seven per side. I'm surprised it didn't bend. So stronger than it looks. For the roofing, we are using different screws. These are actually color matched screws, but then these have a little 
rubber washer underneath that basically seals it when you screw it in because obviously you're putting a bunch of holes and a bunch of penetrations in the roof so you want to be able to seal those i guess that rubber does it until it gets eaten up from the sun and then i don't know what happens at that point here goes the first panel now obviously it's going to take the first couple to kind of get their rhythm down and figure out how they want to do this but i think it's going to go pretty smoothly look at that we already got that first one up over there so now Chris is going to measure our 3 and 7 16 off of that last purlin to the edge of the roof. That will give us our proper overhang. And honestly looking at how much we have there, we could probably cheat that a little further if we really wanted to. Four, go, go down a little bit, a little bit more, like eight, right So one of the things we're running into now, and it's something I read on all the forums, is obviously if the building gets a hair out of square, then you're gonna run into the roof kind of growing in certain spots. So down at that end, we're four inches of overhang. We actually extended it out a little bit further because I want a little more overhang. And we're hoping the ridge cap covers that by doing that. But then by the time we get to this end, we're a little over five inches of overhang because something's kind of tweaked. We know everything down here is right. We've squared it up. We've measured our diagonals. We even redid it when we put the bottom plates in for the walls. But 9, 10, I don't even know what we are to there. Probably close to 12 feet up. And the building just moves like crazy right now without having any type of sidewall on it. So there's a chance something up there is kind of funky and kind of out of whack. And that's what's giving us that out of square little issue that we're fighting. But at this point, there's really nothing we can do about it. Uh, best case scenario, if it bugs me enough, Chris uh, can throw some rain gutters up and then it'll kind of hide it. But I don't think most people coming out here are gonna see that there's a little bit of an inch difference in 21 foot, two inches. The boys are back for lunch. We are working on the second side now. The first side, obviously you can see right there, we are nice and complete. Also did a little wardrobe change, just had to go do a photo shoot for the new work for its shirt. We've dropped a couple of new women's shirts as well as new men's. Let's see if I can show you guys the back. Hold on. I don't know. I don't know how flexible I am. Maybe, maybe, maybe. I don't, I don't think I've been this way. I guess I could just make it easy, post a little picture right here. Workfortapparel.com if you guys want one of these as well as all kinds of other cool stuff. We are unfortunately currently sold out of the bacon jerky, but we have another batch getting made. We do still have a few bags left of the spicy beef jerky though, so jump on that if you guys want those. Otherwise, it'll probably be at least a week until we have a whole new batch in stock and I'd love if you guys would go over there and just read the reviews I mean we take a lot of pride in the stuff that we sell including the jerky line and the reviews are through the roof and phenomenal I'm so glad you guys enjoy them if you're on the fence about ordering some jerky online trust me I would be as well that's the whole reason we actually added reviews to the website and that was my one quick work for plug for the day now on this side we're paying extra close attention to that edge right there and we're making fine adjustments as we work our way down that way we don't end up with a similar issue on that side again I think we're gonna be able to hide it once we put gutters up later on uh, at some point this thing will end up getting gutters the one thing though is now we've locked the roof in and like the roof is pretty solid however these walls still rack right because like you would frame out a house if you don't have sheathing which is what uh, you know let's say plywood on the sides of your walls or in the case of most of these things they use the same metal that you're using on the roof uh, to lock these sides in from wanting to basically become a parallelogram like that right this this whole building right now will move like this I do have some ideas on how to really trick this thing out and make it pretty sick so we're gonna see because obviously right now as well we have you know sun's gonna be coming in from the side as the sun shifts the sun's about right there it kind of moves over this way so you're gonna have sun coming in on both sides which is gonna end up sun bleaching out the tractor which is what we don't want 
So my plan is to somehow close off these sides. I think I've got a pretty cool plan. I had a temporary plan that we were gonna use and I might still do that in the meantime. But you guys know me. You know we just usually just jump in and just start <laughs> over bougieing out things. I do wanna lock these sides in though as soon as we can because there's a good amount of sway in this thing without having anything attached to the sides and it just being an open carport like that. Now that all the roof panels are put on, we're moving to these gable end pieces. For whatever reason, they sent these as two 12 foot sections. The problem is that doesn't give us enough room to make that seam in the middle. I'll show you when they put that other one back up in place. Basically, we have to use three pieces on both of these ends. And they sent us six pieces, so they knew this was gonna be a thing. Instead of making these like 14 footers, 13 footers, whatever, because all this metal, remember, was made to order uh, for this kit, it was just, First two puts in the order with a metal company that's local and then they ship it out. And if these had been a little bit longer, we would just get away with two pieces. One piece going up to there, the other piece going up to there. They make their cut in the middle, make their seam. Everything looks great. But since we're like two inches short, now we have to use three pieces, which means we're gonna have a seam somewhere on this side and somewhere, well, I don't even know where I'm pointing anymore. There and there. So we're trying to decide where we want the seam. Should we just split it somewhere in the middle so they're nice big sections? Do you do it right up here to where it's just a little piece and a little piece on that side? Uh, I told them just do whatever they think feels and looks best. All right, now for the ridge cap. Chris is thinking, he's trying to pretend he's light right now so we don't dent this roof. You can see how much it's swaying. He loves heights though, so it's all right. You don't want to do this one first and I can go help you over there. That one. And just like that, y'all, she is all finished. Let's take a look at how she turned out. Super excited to have this thing done. It actually looks significantly bigger with the roof on. Excited to get the tractors underneath it. And I think once we get this one all dialed in, money permitting, I might come over like five or six feet, build another one right next to it at the same exact elevation, which means we'll be digging into this hill a little bit more. And put like a sweet like pergola patio cover in between the two with like a nice walkway in the two. I don't know. I think we can really do some cool stuff though. One of the things I was a little bit concerned about was this thing looking too tacky from the guest house. And it actually doesn't look bad at all. Really, this tree blocks most of it. But I mean, this is from like the corner of the front of the guest house fence area and you barely see it sticking out there and it looks pretty clean. You know, I'm pretty happy with it. Granted, you have all this junk right here to look at, which I think I'm gonna consolidate 
that way a little bit more and then when the tractors and everything are in here they'll kind of block your view of that again at least for now until we do some sidewalls or something like that i'm definitely glad i went with the pinnacle series as opposed to just their standard series where it has those radius edges to me that just looks very tacky and it looks like old school carport whereas this looks a little bit classier by having the nice peaked roof and they just die off into these eaves over here at least that's my opinion and probably the best part is the fact that from the main house it doesn't look bad at all. Again, my whole goal with this property is to elevate it up into something very nice and very classy and not look too much like a junkyard. And you can see from the house, I mean, it looks pretty dang good over there. Like the biggest eyesore is all those pallets of block that I have now. But with that, we are gonna wrap up. I'm waiting to get my dump truck back so we can bring a bunch of dirt in and grade out a nice driveway up into there. Then we're gonna figure out if we're gonna do gravel or if we're just gonna jump straight in and do concrete, what we're gonna do on the sides. We've got a lot of stuff that we're gonna eventually be doing with this thing. I gotta give a huge thank you to the guys for coming out today and doing the roofing. That was just a, it made my life much easier having the pros come out here and do it versus me finagling with that for like two days. Uh, it was a solid full day to get this thing done. So I know for myself to do it, even with our guys, it would end up being at least two days because we just don't do metal roofing but with that we're gonna wrap up as always thank you guys so much for watching if you're not subscribed already please click the subscribe button now that you not miss out on any future content don't forget to give this video a like aka thumbs up don't forget to check out workfortapparel.com because if there's anything you want in this life you got to be willing to work for it you guys are the best i'm out damn uh.